On more than one occasion, I've had the privilege of being in front of some of the leaders and CEOs in both the concrete and cement industries. And I've told them that whether they choose it or not, that this period of time with the stars lined up, when we are more economically competitive than alternative building materials than we have been in the past, and then when we have such a great green product in concrete that is going to prove so much more beneficial from an environmental and carbon footprint standpoint, that this is the first time the stars have really been lined up, and that their legacy is going to be what did you do when the stars were lined up. And I think that's what all our legacies are, is what did we do when the stars were lined up. The people before us that were in leadership positions did not have that opportunity. You have that opportunity. Please join us as we go forth with this great initiative. Thank you. We believe strongly that concrete is the most sustainable building material known to man. And to substantiate that, we've partnered with MIT in the formation of the hub. The goals of the hub are, in fact, to look at ways that we can better manufacture our product but also better use our product in sustainable methods. I think this really is a huge opportunity for the concrete industry to make ourselves more sustainable, position ourselves uh, for the future demand for sustainable construction and sustainable products. Um, it's an opportunity to do the right thing, but at the same time doing the right thing, I think it's going to provide huge market opportunities for the industry. This is a game changer for the industry. It's an opportunity for us to use the current challenging periods we're in right now to better focus on the value we represent society in a bigger sense. The hub's goal in part is to provide the credibility to better position us for the next opportunities that exist, not just the ones that are currently in front of us. I think that's a big piece of what the hub is going to do for us in the future, is not just help us deal with the issues that are here in the near term, but also the market opportunities, the social responsibility opportunities, the environmental opportunities that we may be confronted with or have to deal with in the next 10 to 20 years. We will validate the sustainability and the sustainable aspects of concrete through research, definitive research, and we will identify new uses of one of the oldest building products or the oldest building products known to man. MIT is the number one engineering uh, school in the country. It's also number one for graduate economics. We were really looking for that combination of both engineering focus and talent, but also the, the economic piece and the, uh, the policy overlay. So it was really just a natural fit. And we wanted validation that can't be trumped. And so uh, when one of our competing industries wants to argue with our argument, they're arguing with MIT. It's not our arguments, it's MIT's argument. We want to take all those arguments that we've been using over the years, validated by MIT, and get out there again and say, Mr. Legislator, Mr. Regulator, Mr. General Public, look at this. This is real. And now we're, we're not going to give handout raw data, engineering data. Um, no one wants to see that. But we are going to then take that research materials and put it into a, a consumable message for all of those different audiences. MIT's Concrete Sustainability Hub is important to the industry because it will accelerate and allow us to focus on emerging technologies and research and take that technology and research to the marketplace and benefit through building technology, concrete pavement technology, and implementation of that research. I think MIT has really assembled a dream team of, of researchers. Um, they've got a very practical and applied focus. The biggest issue is that we have a, uh, the most used man-made material on Earth. And I think our goal is to place concrete on a scientific footing so that we can understand how, how far we can push the properties, how strong can we make it, how tough can we make it, how durable can we make it, so that there's two things. One is, one is using the material with a much more efficient environmental uh, relationship, and the other is designing brand new materials that we've, we've not ever seen before. And so one side of the uh, of the CSH hub is to understand from first principles, from atomic scale upwards, how concrete gains its properties, how we could manipulate these properties, and how to uh, optimize the use of material 
there is an active participation from industry in designing the research projects and uh, evaluating progress and encouraging uh, certain directions. And as time goes on, this is going to be an interaction that I think is going to set a precedent for relationships between industry and academia. As scientists, we do papers and we hope to kind of um, have our research well appreciated by the scientific community. But this program goes far, be far beyond because it has uh, potentially a very um, practical output. And this is why the connection with uh, the sponsors and industry are, I mean, a very, very good things that we can actually transform our ideas into some product and uh, maybe not us, this is not, maybe not our job, but at least we can give some guidelines that are well founded on very fundamental physics and science. It's an interdisciplinary project. We have engineers, we have architects, we have material scientists, chemists, physicists. MIT is uniquely positioned uh, to, to work on this problem because we have tremendous expertise ranging from the, the nanoscale uh, behavior of cement and concrete uh, all the way up to large-scale economics and, uh, and policy issues. Initially, the, the hub has been organized into three major platforms, one on building technology, one on concrete science, and one on econometrics. Um, really, right now, the focus of the first two years of work plans are on the building technology and concrete science side. The building technology side is really a life cycle assessment of both pavements and structures. The concrete science side is really looking at trying to crack the code of, of the DNA of concrete so that we can make it even more sustainable into the future. And then the third piece that, um, that is going to be an overlay, I believe, on both of those two areas is the econometrics piece. Classical approaches to concrete science were rather empirical in the sense of uh, you identified a certain weakness of the material and you made uh, marginal improvements for specific applications. The step which we wanted to take in the concrete uh, uh, sustainability hub, in the concrete science platform, actually to turn this on its head, a shift of paradigm. What we aim to identify here are the possibilities the material offers at fundamental scales of electrons and atoms uh, to make it more sustainable, to improve quality, to improve performance, while minimizing the ecological footprint. It's also true that we would like to uh, gain a better footing, a better understanding of how to, uh, how to compare concrete to other materials so that when a decision is made about whether to build a building out of steel or timber or uh, uh, concrete, an intelligent, informed decision can be made. One of the fundamental measures of sustainability is the triple bottom line. And a triple bottom line means we want economic growth, we want reduced environmental impact, and we want social benefit. And that could be in the form of, of jobs or, or better living in neighborhoods and, and society as a whole. So fundamentally, that's what we're interested in helping the industry find, where concrete can improve its triple bottom line and how it can grow in the future as an industry and with it reduced environmental impact. Life cycle assessment is an inventory of all of the resources that go into making a product, operating a product, and disposing of it. So life cycle assessment is effectively bean counting all of the quantities of materials and energy used at each stage of the, of the building's life, and then helping to understand where improvements could be made and, and how one building design may compare to another building design. The life cycle assessment, really understanding um, what our product's carbon footprint is, I think it's, it's important for the entire nation, it's important for the world to understand what type of environmental impact that we're having. It's doing the right thing for the right reasons. And the right reasons are pretty broad based. Yes, obviously it has the opportunity to help us grow market share. But also it's just the right thing fundamentally to do. It's also about protecting our environment, protecting our product, protecting our industry for future generations. It's an opportunity to have a real positive impact on society.